7.30 this morning. Today we are checking in with a Spokane native who is living in China to hear about his experience with the coronavirus taking over his new home. Governors across the country are pleading for more supplies to fight the coronavirus, and this morning we explain why their national stockpile is nearly depleted. see it right there. Everyone doing their part, of course, to practice social distancing and flatten the curve with COVID-19 on everyone's minds. You can see it here, the Seattle Fire Department making a fun informational video on how to stop the spread. The music video itself has tips like keeping six feet apart and wiping down surfaces. I don't know what it is about that part. It makes me laugh every time. So I have to, even I knew it was coming. But uh, we love seeing that they're having fun. Of course, they suggest a tip. Of course, if you uh, feel anxious, dance it out yourself. Thank you everybody for joining us here on Up With Krim on your Thursday morning. I'm Joshua Robinson, once again joined by Jen York, Evan Narani, and Dana Marie McNichol who have all continued to work from home just like so many of you are doing today. Jen, bringing us the latest on the coronavirus in our area in just a few minutes. Evan will continue tracking your Thursday forecast. And Dana Marie is bringing an update on a Spokane native that she first into a, introduced to us in February, who is living in China. We will check in with each of them in just a few minutes. But first, we have breaking news this morning. A record 6.6 .6 million Americans have filed for unemployment for the first time. This is the second week in a row that millions of layoffs have come across the country. And according to the Labor Department, the week prior had 3.3 million layoffs. That also was a record. It's about 10 million Americans in total so far. And we haven't seen unemployment numbers like these since the recession between the years 2008 and 2010. All right, we're going to check in with Jen York, who joins us broadcasting live from her kitchen to let us know what you need to know about the coronavirus this morning. Good to see you, Jen. Yeah, you too. I know we are social distancing. I have a monitor so I can kind of see you guys from afar, but... Yeah, here we are a week or so in with our stay at home order, still bringing you your daily headlines. So here's what you need to know this morning here locally and across the state. Breaking overnight, three students at the University of Idaho have tested positive for coronavirus. But let's put it into perspective here. They were not all at the same location. So university leaders say one patient is an 18 year old student. He was on campus last week and is experiencing mild symptoms. Another was a 21 year old student in Boise. The third was a 38 year old graduate student who attends school electronically. Well, this morning, Spokane Public Schools is considering allowing pass or fail grades in high school. This is in lieu of a letter grade. The proposal would also allow seniors to apply for credit waivers. In a letter written to parents, SPS says the plan is dependent on guidance from the State Board of Education. And for anyone who's homeschooling their kids right now, just so you know, right now, Washington schools are set to reopen April 27th. That is, of course, if we do not get an extension to our stay home, stay healthy orders. Well, this morning, Costco is unveiling new rules for shoppers. It is now limiting how many people can enter a warehouse. Starting today, only two people per membership card will be allowed inside. Company leaders say it's a temporary change, but it's meant to ensure the safety for customers and employees. Well, back out here live in my kitchen, of course, things are okay here. We're being able to complete our stay at home orders, but for now we have something to look forward to with the weather with Evan. Thank you very much, Jen. Yeah, I'd say pretty promising sight with the chance of uh, those clouds parting a bit and moving toward more sunny conditions. It looks like the weaker waves of this low pressure system that has been swirling around us, bringing us snow showers, rain showers. Well, they're sort of starting to taper off a bit and going to deliver us with warmer temperatures as we head into the weekend and the beginning of next week. We've just got to get through a little bit of the cold and some additional days of showers. So here's what we have to start off the morning. Temperatures right now largely in the 20s and 30s. It is pretty chilly, I have to admit. 
uh, but we're going to warm up to the 40s by the afternoon. And if you take a look at what we've got on satellite radar so far, I mean, it is pretty minimal activity. We're not really seeing all that much compared to what we've seen over the last couple days. It actually has stayed relatively calm and dry for the most part. And uh, this morning, we're really mainly picking up on showers over on the west side of the state. What we have going into the next several hours is uh, temperatures warming up 45 degrees is that afternoon high, partly cloudy skies. Uh, we're going to see clouds pretty significant off toward the north Idaho mountains and western Montana. But again, moving toward the weekend and the beginning of next week, we're hoping that uh, those showers are few and far between and we'll move toward the trend of warmer and drier conditions. We'll let's take a look at that seven day forecast in just a bit. But for now, I will send things back to you, Jen. All right, Evan, thank you so much. Well, the other big topic this week that has everyone talking the earthquake in Idaho. What a weird week that it's been. But this morning, we do have some new information on that earthquake. It rattled people from Boise up to Canada. Well, a Washington state expert says that earthquake can be attributed to a fault in Nevada and Utah. Nevada and Utah are growing wider to the east and west, slowly, you know, over the last uh, 15 million years or so. And so every now and then we get a uh, we get a, um, a decent sized earthquake on one of these faults that's helping accommodate that extension. Now he says the compression on the west coast causes a rotational effect in Idaho. He says right now Idaho is being stretched rather than being squeezed. Well, University of Idaho workers are using 3D printers to create face masks and shields for healthcare workers. The university right now has 25 printers. And crews say at first it took them six hours to 3D print a mask, but the team cut the time down to a little more than two hours now. Right now they can produce about one dozen masks per day. It replicates the shape of the M95 mask. It's made out of uh, plastic and it has a rubber uh, edge. So when it touches the face, it completely seals the space between the face and the mask. All right, eventually university leaders hope to work with the state to distribute the supplies. And the University of Washington researchers are creating an app to help diagnose coronavirus. Now, right now, they're asking for volunteers to record themselves coughing. They're hoping to develop the app to recognize the sounds and help identify patients. Volunteers are asked to cough 20 times then include up to 10 samples of talking, laughing, and clearing their throat. If, you're, are, if you are interested, you can head to creme.com and fill out that survey. All ages are welcome to participate. Now that is your morning rush. More news in less time. Of course, we'll have more here on Up With Creme Daily as this information changes quite frequently. But of course, we're going to stay on top of the headlines and bring them to you here. And for the meantime, we'll send things back to you in studio, Joshua. Jen, I'm glad to see you're still comfortable this morning. I would imagine this situation has given you a lot of chances to figure out some new ways to improvise working from home and giving those tips with other people, right? In our industry, you don't work from home. You know, you're typically always in the studio. So for us and our experience, yeah, it's becoming a, a new norm, as you say, but getting used to it. I think we can make it happen now. I think we have shown that we are going to be able to do this for a while and I'm glad to see that we're all able to still kind of have this communication with each other even though we can't physically see each other face to face. But we will of course check in with you throughout the morning. Thank you once again for joining us today. 738 this morning and governors across the country are pleading for more supplies from the federal government to help fight the coronavirus. But according to the Department of Homeland Security, that national stockpile is nearly depleted. It is, yeah, we're sending it directly to hospitals. Yeah, states are asking for test kits, ventilators, masks and gloves, but we continue to hear reports that governors say they're unable to get what they need. And you heard from the president there, President Trump saying the government is sending these materials directly to hospitals rather than adding it to that stockpile and then distributing it from there. 739 this morning, time once again to check in with our own Dana Marie Nickel, who checked in with a Spokane native who has been living in China. Good morning, Dana Marie. Good morning, Joshua. That's right. Long before we were ordered to stay at home, people in China were experiencing our reality. 
Now, back on February 13th, I FaceTimed with Tim Reeves, a Spokane native living in Nanjing, China right now. At that point, there were only 15 cases of confirmed coronavirus in the United States. Now we have just over 186,000 confirmed cases. That's according to the CDC. Tim has been quarantined in his small apartment since January 26th, and the scene in China is similar to what we see in the U.S. just a month after speaking with him. Businesses were closed, restricted travel, and a mandatory masks in public. We got up with Tim now to see how his life progressed. And good news, last week, Tim City lifted the stay-at-home order almost two months after it all began. So it kind of happened suddenly. A couple shops opened up, and then literally like two days later, everything was open. People uh, still, you know, scanning temperatures and stuff, but like every shop's open. Now that businesses are open and people are starting to get back to day, to day life, streets are starting to fill up, he does say life isn't totally back to normal just yet. Social behavior has changed a bit. It used to be people stood really close to you in line, and that doesn't happen so much anymore. Everyone's still wearing masks. Masks are still, like, mandatory uh, out in public. On the other side of the two-month quarantine, Tim does send a message of hope and reassurance to his friends and family back in America. It is something that can be controlled. The situation isn't hopeless. It's just going to take a big, you know, you know, community effort. People are going to need to get together and get this thing beat. Like America, if we're united in solving a problem, I think is capable of anything. Uh, and we just need to get everyone on board. He does leave us with some advice to be kind to one another. You don't know what other people are going through in this tough time and uncertainty. He also says, get a bidet. You don't need all that toilet paper. So this is the second time we've had a bidet story in our Up With Creme morning show. But maybe some good news since he's already gone through that two-month quarantine. Joshua? Yeah, Dana Marie, you brought it up. And, of course, Jen York once again joining us. This is the second day in a row we have a story about the possibility of bidets. Jen, what do you think? Well, bidets are popular here in the Pacific Northwest. We know that now. And of course, Dana Marie, it is good that uh, we got a chance to check in with him as well. His, his attitude seemed like he was in good spirits overall. Yeah, totally. And I, and I think it's such a cool perspective since I remember FaceTiming him in February and thinking this was just so bizarre, obscure. I couldn't even imagine being in his position, being in his home for two months. I was like, what are you doing? How are you passing the time? I had so many questions for him. And then just a month later, we're in that same position here in the United States. So it's, it's kind of interesting to kind of have it come full circle and to also see that he is out of quarantine and there is light at the end of the tunnel. Yeah, giving us that light at the end of the tunnel, very important for right now as we are all still settling into this new normal. Jen, Dana Marie, thank you for joining us this morning. We'll check back in with both of you in just a little bit. Of course, many of you have also been sending us questions surrounding the coronavirus stimulus package. And coming up after this next break, we're going to tell you about five other ways you can benefit from the package aside from those one-time checks. We also understand that you've got a lot of questions surrounding the coronavirus and we want to make it easier for you to get some information. You see right here we have our text line 509-448-2000 with several keywords that you can send to us. You can get information on a number of topics, topics you might want to know more about. Once again, our text line 509-448-2000 and we'll be right back after this short break.